beautiful bibliophiles, it's Nectaria. I hope you're having a great day and today, since we're so close to the end of the year, I wanted to give you guys some book recs, like of short, fast-paced books that like read very quickly anyways, because I'm seeing a lot of you like being stressed over not having gone far enough with your reading challenge, so I wanted to bring you some short and very fun books if you want to make some progress and try to achieve your goal. However, I want you to know that it's obviously a very intense year and you need to cut yourself some slack, you need to go easy on yourself and you need to take time for yourself. So if you didn't make that much progress with your reading challenge as you wanted, like that's okay and you don't need to like be mad at yourself or push yourself too hard to finish it. But if and only if you're in the right mindset to try and make some more progress with your reading challenge, whether it's on Goodreads or like just Bookstagram or maybe apart from social media you made a reading goal, a reading goal I'm sorry for yourself, so I just wanted to bring you some books if that's the case. So this is a lot of short books that are also like fast paced and you can read them like in one sitting and they're going to take you like a short amount of time to finish, like you're gonna probably read through them more quick than other books, but obviously it's not just a bunch of short books, it's short books that I found very enjoyable and some of my favorite books that just happen to be short. So I'm going to like divide them into different like categories or genres so you can find what you want more easily, so hopefully you won't only make progress with your reading challenge with this direct, you're going to also find some new favorites, hopefully. But again, disclaimer, reading is not a chore, uh, like if you want to do a chore, there are like hundreds of chores to do around the household, you know, so we read because we enjoy to read, because we find like calm and peace through reading and because it's one of our favorite hobbies, we don't read to push ourselves to prove anything to anyone because like Goodreads is not gonna come knocking on your door like, hey, you didn't read those hundred books, like if you want an app that will terrorize you, there's always the Duolingo owl, you know, like that's super creepy. So, so yeah, and if anyone like is being like offensive with you and like makes fun of you for not reading enough books, then that's on them, they're really, really bad people and you don't deserve them in your life, like you don't need them in your life, you deserve better people around you. So anyways, don't push yourself too hard is my point and do not read as a chore, read whenever you feel like it and whatever you feel like reading. The first category is manga and graphic novels and I'm not the right person to give you Rex for manga and graphic novels because I don't read nearly enough of them, like I've read very very few of them and the reason why I haven't read them is not because I'm not interested to, I'm very interested to. It's just that, you know, they tend to be a little more expensive than like novels and keep me occupi occupied for like a less amount of time. So when I have money to invest in books, I don't often prioritize like manga graphic novels, but I really want to. I have so many on my wish list. I'm probably going to make like a separate video of like manga and graphic novels I'll read. But anyways, my point is if you want to read manga and graphic novels, which are really good when you're trying to read books fast, I am pointing you to the right direction, which is like channels like Books with Chloe, I love her channel, I love Chloe herself so much, and she reads a lot of uh, manga and graphic novels, so like, if you watch any Books with Chloe video, you're going to get super cool recs for manga and graphic novels, so this is where I'm sending you to, but I myself have some manga recs, so let's get to those. First one is Death Note by Takeshi Obata and Shugumi Ohba, I hope I pronounced those names right, I'm very sorry if I didn't. And anyways, this is a black edition containing volumes 1 and 2. Maybe you've watched the anime of this, which is like the most popular anime of all time probably, but maybe you haven't. Anyways, this is the story of Light Yagami, a teen who pretty much gets very dangerous and immoral because he gets a death note which is like a notebook, but if you write a name on it, that person dies. So obviously that gives him a lot of power that he doesn't know exactly how to handle in the beginning, but then like he knows how to handle it and it's scary people. 
And then there's like the other side of people trying to stop him from whatever he's doing. And anyways, it's a great book having to do with like morality and God syndrome because like thinks he's doing the right thing by ending the lives of like immoral bad like people and like murderers, you know. But okay, dog's barking. Okay, that's a bit annoying. Okay, anyways, uh, let's let the dog bark. Um, anyways, I think that this is one of the best manga ever, one of the best stories ever, and I feel like you're really going to enjoy it if you read it, like, the plot is very fast-paced, and there's, like, a lot of action going on, and the art is, like, gorgeous, like, this is gorgeous, so, you know, I highly... Recommend it. Next manga I want to recommend is Happiness, which I can't show you because I don't own it because I bought it from a friend to read. Anyways, this is pretty much a story about vampires and uh, it's quite cool. Like, I already, not already, I only read the first volume. And, like, the plot, I'm gonna be honest, like, it's not like super mind blowing, like, at least in the first volume, like, not a lot of things happen, but it's still very fast-paced and like... Okay, this has obviously turned into an ASMR video, because like... Now there's like birds singing, but like birds singing are such cool, beautiful noises, so let's let that go on. Anyways, and so the plot isn't like anything mind-blowing, and it is quite... Not a lot of things happening in the first volume, but the art is gorgeous. And it's like super short and like you can read it in half an hour. Next category is uh, collections of short stories. We all know how helpful collections of short stories can be when you want to read something in a little amount of time. For example, I'd recommend like Oscar Wilde's Collected Fairy Tales because they're just amazing. Like The Happy Prince and The Selfish Giant and all of the other stories and fairy tales in that book are just amazing like honestly like stop reading the classic like red riding hood tale to your kids and start reading oscar wilde to them before bedtime like they're gonna be traumatized because like they're super sad but like they'll end up like having a great taste in literature and getting some great moral messages for them so oscar wilde fairy tales are the obvious answer for a great collection of source stories, and then like Oscar Wilde um, has some other source stories like the Canterville Ghost, which is just like 30 pages, and you can find it either separately, like this edition, or like you can find it in a collection with other stories. Another honorable like category mention, I guess you could call it, that I also don't have many recs for is short nonfiction, like I don't read that much nonfiction, but like there are so many short nonfiction books. Like there is a lot of like short feminist nonfiction literature, so I would suggest some books like We Should All Be Feminist, although I haven't read it. But like it's a book called We Should All Be Feminist, so it's obviously great. And my nonfiction rec is this like series of nonfiction books, which are like quite humorous at the same time, and they're called uh, The Bluffer's Guide. And it's like the Bluffer's Guide in different like area of knowledges or hobbies or sciences, I suppose you could say. For example, as an archaeology student, I read Bluff Your Way in Archaeology, which is like a hundred pages. And it was like a super fun time. Like I read it in an afternoon and it was hilarious, honestly. Like it was so ironic and just lovely. And anyways, like it has so many different like bluffers guys. Like there's one like how to bluff your way in football or like uh, ballet or computer science. You know, there's everything. So you can find your area of interest and read like a fun book, making fun of how little you know of your area of interest. So that is something I would recommend to read quickly and also have a very fun time with. Now is the time people were moving to categories I actually know stuff about, yay! And first one is Poetry Collections. I mostly read like classic older poets, but I would not recommend them for like a quick read because they're quite hard to read because of the language or because of like how they... Oh my god, this neighborhood! Uh, or like how many poems there are in their poetry collections. But I do want to recommend two poetry collections that came out this year by the same Poet slash author Mushmi Radhampara 
Uh, she released poses in March and uh, 321 AM in October, if I'm not mistaken. And those two books are like absolutely lovely. Like they have so many poems about mental illness and like uh, especially 321 AM is a very hard like book to read. Now my mom has Christmas songs on. Oh my gosh. Anyways, 321 AM has a lot of books on mental illness and other hard things to read about, so I would have a trigger warning for that about mental illness. Like Murmi has a trigger warning herself, so check that before reading it. But it's very beautiful. I feel like it's very similar to like the classic poetry that I enjoy, so I fl fl flew, flew, is that a word? Anyways, I moved through that book very quickly and I really enjoyed it. And then Poses is also really good and it has like poems separated in different like themes, like it has one about the connection of humans to nature, another one about feminists which was my favorite probably because like it was so cool and just her poetry is just so so beautiful she makes like really great metaphors and I just enjoyed her poetry so much like I am a bit reluctant when it comes to modern gay poetry because they have that pro separated by space bars, space bars thing that I don't like but Mushmi did a great job writing a bit more classic poetry and it was just amazing. Next category that I'm super excited about is uh, classic books that happen to be very short. Oh wait, Nectaria, aren't our classics like super slow paced and not right to read when you want to get through books quickly? No guys, that's such a stereotype, like of course some classic books are slow paced in the same way that some modern day books happen to be slow paced. Saying that all classics are slow paced, slow paced is such a stereotype, so... If anything, a lot of classics happen to be super short, and a lot of my favorite classics happen to be super short. First, one of my favorite authors of all time, George Orwell, wrote the best political allegory of all time, The Animal Form. And like, you have to read this, it's super short. Like, if you're not interested in like, finding the connection to actual like, history and politics, maybe it won't be that fun for you, but still, it's super cool. It shows how a revolution that happened for the right causes might end up getting quite immoral and like how the oppressed can themselves become tyrants when given the power and it has one of my favorite and one of the best quotes of all time uh, at some point there is a rule among the animal farm the quote says all animals are equal but some are more equal than others which is so deep and it's something that I feel like happens in our society like we say that there's equality but there's not actually equality everywhere so i feel like that's a great book to read it's one of my faves go ahead and read it super short next to get to the books i physically own we have francis kafka the metamorphosis which is like super short i feel like i mean look at how short it is like not compared to my head because my head is like super big anyways but like anyways even compared to a normal head this is like super tiny and it's less than 100 pages and it is about this guy who wakes up one morning and he has turned into like a sort of insect like a cockroach like insect and he's trying to like convince his family and the people around him that he is himself but everyone is obviously disgusted and don't want him around so I feel like this is like a super cool metaphor about how modern society, everything moving so fast, like people are super isolated from each other and like people aren't interested in understanding each other and so on each other's some affection. So I feel like that's a great metaphor for that and it's obviously also a very fun and like hilarious book. Like it's both serious and like fun to read so I would recommend this. Next two books by the same author that just prove how much he deserved the novel that he got. Uh, the author is John Steinbeck. First book is Of Mice and Men. Before we get to this, let me just rant about how awful this 80s Greek edition of this book is because on the back they thought it was a good idea to put like the ending of the book. 
like the part of the book that you shouldn't know about. It's the only part they put on the back. Why? Just why? Why not a synopsis? Like, why the end? What were they thinking? That doesn't make any sense. Anyways, so I was like, I read it and I was like, knew that this was going to happen when I start a book. So obviously you're going to have more fun than I did. And I really enjoyed it. So that's, that says a lot. Anyways, this is the story of George and Lenny, two friends that live like around 1930 and travel uh, with the dream to once own their own land and like work on their own land, but for starters they're just looking for a job at someone else's land and they find one. Uh, and apart from like the whole plot about dreams not coming true and not coming to life as we want them, I feel like this is super important because like it has one of the very first like representations of autism in like mainstream like popular literature and obviously like um in the 1930s when this book was released they didn't know a lot of things about autism like it was definitely a taboo and people weren't like treated equal so that's super sad but like i feel like john seibach does a great job for training like a form of autism in this book even though he himself probably doesn't know much about it like i'm not sure maybe i'm just saying stupid things maybe he knew about it i don't know but anyways i feel like like this is a super like tender and soft and like nice book of like disgusting autism in a way so, and I just feel like that is great for its time because like no one talked about artists during that time. So I feel like John Seibach doing that is super important. Next John Seibach book is The Moon is Down, which is pretty much an anti-war novel about a small town that gets invaded by a foreign army out of the blue. And this was uh, published during the Second World War. So obviously there are some parallels to the actual Second World War, but nothing too clear. It's mostly just about being a great anti-war novel with some like super cool dialogues and super cool quotes in under 130 pages, like under 130 pages. Next is one of my favorite pieces of like more modern classic literature and is the perfect example of how obsessed I am with books that portray characters that have like a really hard identity crisis going on and that are like psychologically creepy because they make you think that you could just as easily have an identity crisis at any given moment and that book is The Pigeon by Patrick Saskate. Like I'm going to tell you a plot and it's going to sound super weird but like take it as a metaphor and try to understand like how hyped I am about it and not you know just comment about how weird this book sounds because Okay, it is weird, but like, I love it, so cut me some slack here. Anyways, it's about this dude who works as like a security guard outside a bank, I think. And anyways, his wife has abandoned him for years and he just has like a very boring life and like such uh, the same routine, you know, every day, the same routine. And he pretty much lives in misery. He leaves his apartment, he eats the same things every day, he goes to work and then back to his apartment and it's pretty, you know, boring. And one day, as he leaves his apartment, like he sees a pigeon on the corridor. And for some reason, the way the pigeon just disrupts his daily routine makes him like super mad and agitated and just so like afraid of the pigeon for God's sake. And I feel like he tries to show like how he was so used to his routine that like something as tiny and like usual as a pigeon like caused him to have an identity crisis and I feel like it's great that it shows you how easily the human brain can just snap and you can like have an identity crisis out of the most usual and everyday things so I thought this book was super great for that reason and I highly recommend it like it is psychologically scary to read and like super weird but also like fun to read. Last classic is The Little Prince by Antoine de Saint-Exupéry 
and I don't tend to attack people for their bookish opinions, like I never do that, but if you don't think this book is the most precious snowflake, then there's clearly something wrong with you, like you don't have a heart probably, you should, you know, check that. Anyways, we all know the story of the little prince that takes care of his rose and his two volcano planet, the stars uh, traveling from planet to planet and ending up on Earth. And I feel like the older you are when you read this, the better you understand it. Like, I read it when I was super little. And I thought it was, like, super cool and sad. And, like, I got sad. But I didn't, like, really understand the point and, like, the metaphors in this. It has some of the most beautiful quotes of all time. Like, it shows just the innocence of childhood against, like, the madness of adulthood. And I feel like that's great. I mean, it's gonna hunt you. And it's gonna make you super sad, but I highly recommend it. Like, I feel like you're gonna have such, you know, a sad but great time reading it. So, highly recommend The Little Prince if you haven't already read it. Next category, I was thinking how middle grade is sometimes like fast paced and easy to read quickly. So, I'm gonna give you some middle grade regs, although I don't read that much middle grade. Starting with the one I least enjoy, like still enjoy, but not that much. And we're going to end up to my favorite middle grade of all time, like my childhood fave. I'm trying to be calm here, but I obviously can't. The first one is the Century Quartet. First book is called Ring of Fire by Pier Domenico Baccalario. I hope I pronounced the name right. But anyways, this person wrote the Century Quartet, which follows for uh, kids, for like teens that pretty much are connected by the fact that they all have the, their birthday on lip day and they realize that when like the three kids uh, go for vacation to the hotel owned by the fourth kid's parents I feel like her name is like Electra, Electra or something anyways they all stay uh, in that hotel in Rome and they realize that they have the same birthday and they realize that that gives them specific uh, kind of supernatural powers that each one has and a murder of a man happens and somehow they're connected to it and they try to realize what has happened and they pretty much just follow that quest throughout Rome you know how much I love stuff that is said in Italy and in the next three books I feel like they follow the quest to different cities all over the world anyways like this is not my favorite like it was super cool but not like my favorite of all time but still super fun uh super quick to read i feel like the other three books are even shorter than this so you can just start with the first book next middle grade series is the very well known a series of unfortunate events by lemony snicket uh, which follows uh, the three Baudelaire siblings, Violet, Klaus, and Sunny. And after their parents' tragic death, they are adopted by their uncle, Count Olaf, who isn't actually so nice to them because he has a greater plan of stealing their, um, like, fortune. And they're just trying to find out what actually happened to their parents and to try and save themselves from Count Olaf. And... Uh, this series consists of 13 books, like I feel like the first five books are like the really short ones, like this is about 160 pages and the other four are at about 200 pages. And then some books get bigger as the series goes on, but none of them is super long. So you can start with like the first books, if you want to read some quick books that are obviously super fun as well, and like the writing is great, the plot is great, I actually kind of want to read this too. Anyway, so many books on my reread TBR and my actual TBR, so... Next up is a book I'm gonna rant about, because you all missed that book when you were children because you were too busy reading Percy Jackson. And yes, I am very ashamed and embarrassed that I haven't read Percy Jackson, but, I, you know, I'll do it at some point. Anyways, the point is that while reading that Rick Riordan book, you missed another great reader... Okay. I just ran so much that I can't speak. Anyways, while you were reading Percy Jackson, you missed on another great Greek Grey Orden book, and that is no other than the 39 Clues series. Okay, breathing. 
Uh, so only the first book is written by Rick Riordan, I think, and maybe like he collaborated on the next books, but I feel like every book is written by a different author, which isn't as bad as it sounds. If anything, like it's great, and there's not like much of a difference, and it's just super cool. So the main series consists of 10 books, then there's like another series called Cahill vs. Vespers, which is like six books. And then there's like another series which is called The Unstoppables, which has like four books. And I think there's like another series, but I never got to that. Anyways, the 39 clues follow Amy and Dan Cahill. Um, and after their grandfather, uh, grandmother, I'm very sorry, after their grandmother uh, Grace dies, like she calls her relatives, um, are called to her funeral. Anyways, and in her will, she says that she would like them to either like take one million dollars and like leave or participate in like a mystery clue hand which is like super intriguing and obviously most of like the relatives choose to take the money and leave but a lot of them which are the characters we follow throughout the series choose to take the clue hand and anyways there are like a lot of branches in the family and a lot of secrets and like a big past of the family and it's super intriguing. I absolutely love that series. Like the amount of obsessed I was with that series was like super unhealthy. Like it was the only thing I ever thought all day from ages nine to thirteen. Like I'm not kidding. I was so obsessed with that series and like that book has gotten so much dust on it. And oh my gosh, I have not opened this in years oh my god i'm sorry but like the fills are real i have not opened this in years oh my god anyways it's quite a fun read like it's not the shortest it's like this is 300 pages i believe but it's so fast-paced and like so action-packed and so mysterious that like you can fly through it anyways i'm just gonna put it down because if i don't put it down soon i'm gonna want to reread and I can't afford to reread any more books. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Like, the feels are real. I'm sorry. Like, the feels are real. Like, see how damaged this is because I kept rereading it as a kid and an early teen? The feels are real, people. Final category because this video is taking forever and my hair is a mess and this household and neighborhood just won't stay quiet for me to film is books written in verse and I feel like this is quite an unpopular category like I feel like people who don't like poetry like just assume that they also won't enjoy books written in verse when they're quite different from poetry like they're quite similar but also quite different as a person that enjoys poetry I can't actually think what you'll think of this book but I feel like it's a genre that everyone can enjoy because you know like they tell a contemporary story just in verse you know and that makes it just more quite uh, you know lyrical and like emotional and I just think like you know you can enjoy it even if you think like you dislike everything that has to do with uh, poetry. I think like you could enjoy it and actually I feel like it's a great place to start with like getting into poetry. So with no further ado, let's get to the specific regs. I have obviously Elizabeth Acevedo's The Poet X, which follows Shiomara, a teen who writes a lot of poetry, like she fills her notebooks with poetry and Sadly, she lives in a very austere, like, household, like, her family is, like, very religious, especially her mother, and they don't let her be as, like, independent and free as she deserves to be, and, like, as she needs to be, so it's a bit hard for her to, uh, like, get the courage to get more out in the world and get her poetry more out in the world. But this is just like a masterpiece, like, this is definitely more on the poetry side than the other two books I have to recommend because we pretty much follow the story through Shimara's poems, but it's just such a special story and like, I feel like you really enjoy it and especially like if you write and if you write poetry, like it hits different, like I write poetry and like, it hit different, like, it's by itself like super emotional, but if you write. Like, it's even better, because it hits different. 
I don't know if you get what I mean. Next up I have two books by the same author, that is Sarah Crushan, and the first book I have is One, which follows conjoined twins T.P. and Grace, and just um, the hardships they face within their family, within school, with their friends, their hardships of their life in general, but also just how much they love each other, like through the hardships, they just... Um, like super supportive to each other and they love each other so much and it's just such an emotional like book like it's super heartwarming but it's also super heartbreaking and you know it's definitely gonna leave you crying like a lot of books in this list I feel like will leave you crying and this is one of them and I highly recommend it uh the writing is gorgeous like the lyrical poetical writing is gorgeous written in verse but not quite like a poet X. it's pretty much this is a story reading in verse. It's not that much on the poetry alley as the poet eggs. So if you're feeling a bit reluctant about poetry, uh, this might be a better option, but definitely do check out the poet eggs too. And the other Sarah Crushan book is this gorgeous book called Moonrise, which I didn't enjoy as much as one, but it was still like super cool. This follows like, uh, what's his name? Joe. Uh, Joe is 17 years old and he has not seen his brother in 10 years because his brother Ed has been on death row for a crime he may or may not have committed that is also examined throughout the book. And anyways, the date of his death uh, penalty of his execution is set and Joe wants to actually see his brother after 10 years and like just communicate a bit with him. And we follow like their struggle to try and save their brother Ed from death penalty and it's quite a heavy book because death penalty is quite a heavy topic and it's just so inhuman and it's like obviously like terrible that it's still going on like this is set in Texas where I believe death penalty is still happening and that is just so awful and like it's just unbelievable and inhumane and I feel like this is a great outcry against death penalty and also a very beautiful uh, heartbreaking emotional story. I knew this video like pretty much took an entire eternity but I hope that you enjoyed the regs, I hope you get some new face from these regs and anyways if you did like see through the whole thing to watch my chaotic face trying to speak English and just failing and like just me being all over the place in general, thank you so so much for watching and I'll see you soon with another video. Until then, take care and have a great great day. Bye!